pedal friends. Today we're looking at an EQ. Now an EQ isn't necessarily a sexy pedal because it doesn't do an overdrive or an effecty thing or it doesn't go bing, 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 bing. It's a tone shaper. And if you have one, like the one from Boss, it could turn your one channel amp or your two channel amp or your relatively simple setup into a much more flexible tone creating monster. Now, let's take a look at the whole thing right there. Uh, there it is. Looks a little bit different than the other um, 200 series pedals because it actually has like a dot matrixy kind of a simple screen on it. So this is a graphic EQ. And it has, let me explain this, it has stereo input and stereo output, which can result in different EQing on the left and right or completely EQing a incoming stereo signal uh, the same way by linking A and B, in which case these two uh, A and B buttons or lights would light up the same way. Uh, but there's a lot of routing options. There is a series and a parallel, so both of them are going unaffected from each other, uh, which means a full stereo mode that would be parallel, or uh, the EQ A would go into EQ B. If you're boosting all the way on 800 and it's not enough, well, then you can go and boost some more by putting them in series. Um, you can go uh, A and B, so stereo gets some to mono and then out mono again. There's a lot of options in this. The way I'm doing it is... I go into A from my guitar, so input A, and out into the amp. That way, the A section is in front of the amplifier, meaning I can push the preamp in certain frequencies more or less, which can be very cool. Then B is separate, they're not linked, so they're not the same settings, is in the effects loop of the amplifier. So if we look to the pedal side, camera, that's the way I have it set up, going in into A, out into the amp, and then effects loop from the amp back into the effects return. That way, this is in front of the amp and at the same time uh, in the effects loop. So it could post drive of the amp, which in this case is the ref dynamis, um, shape the distortion or whatever is happening in it, which means... Uh, Pushing it in front of the amp, it'll change the way the amp creates the tone. Uh, but then in the effects loop, you're shaping the tone that has been created, if that makes any sense. Um, there are a lot of possibilities with this pedal. Covering all of them will be difficult. So we're doing this. We're doing individual A and B, which you, of course, can uh, you can shape in front of it with A. And then in the same preset, uh, in the effects loop with B. Okay, they're both active. It's not either or, but that's also how we're going to show it. Um, in different presets, there's one, two, three, and four presets, and it actually shows you the curve right there, which is very nice. Manual means whatever is set up right now. Uh, you can also skip through memory with this. Instead of holding the memory button, you can turn the thing on and off. Uh, the last thing that's missing is you can do all of this with MIDI. Okay? You can completely control it with MIDI. And on the side here, and of course a USB to, you know, updates and stuff, uh, are these little uh, mini jack inputs. There would be a space for big MIDI ports, but they decided to do this. What they didn't decide is give you these cables. These cables came with my Bebo from Poly. Poly Effects, they actually do supply these cables. Uh, two Notes Captor X also comes with one of these mini uh, plug to MIDI cables. Boss decides not to do that. Boss does decide to give you batteries, which is kind of cool. If you can see on this um, overdrive, on the OD200, there's a battery compartment at the bottom. I think it holds three AA's, and they do come in the box. I kind of wish they gave me the MIDI cables instead of the batteries. Uh, the MIDI cables in the, in the uh, quantities that they would buy them would probably be 50 cents, so who would give, who would give a shit? But they don't. So, here we have frequencies, you know, 30, and it shows you, and this is all bell, so that band, boost, or cut. There's no shelving on it. You can see 200, 400, 800, 1.6, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can, you can read, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's actually what's happening. 
Um, if I push these two at the same time, channel and memory, I'm going to the menu. And um, a lot of the stuff in the menu has to do with switches because on the back, there's also an expression slash control input. So you can actually use a dual foot switch if you wanted to and uh, change from channel A to B or some presets or it, I don't know, maybe turn an individual frequency on and off. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Switch function is right off. Memory function, memory up. Oh, you could do, you know, then there's extra switches for that. Expression, expression minimum and maximum setting. Look at all the fun stuff you can control. So the structure is parallel. You can switch that to series. Those are the two things. We already talked about that. We need it in parallel. But actually the way that it's right now is it's kind of in series. A is in front of the amp, B is B in the effects loop, so they're kind of in series. It's just the preamp of the amp is in the middle. And then this is interesting. There's the type. 3800 to 12K. Or in this case, in, in this case, why am I doing this? Uh, 12.8K. You can do 32, 1K, 16K, so you have a higher high end. Or 28, 880, 14K. So all these kind of change around a bit. So if, if it's hitting the spot but not quite, try one of the other types. Because you can see there are three different frequency shift types. Link is off. That means they're doing independent things. And then there's other things that's all MIDI, 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 and all that stuff. So um, let's go to here again in case we want to check that. Um, why would you need an EQ? Now, what if you get to the venue and all of a sudden all the sounds you did are too boomy? You could easily globally pull the low end down a bit because you can't EQ your cap, okay? Um, maybe the room has kind of like a standing wave kind of, woo, you know, you fix that. But even more so, you go to the gig, you got one guitar, it's got all single chords. Well, you could fatten them up a bit. Bam, there you go. Uh, you come to the gig, you got one guitar, and you want a little bit more sparkling highs than the humbuckers can give you. Bam, you can do that. And um, you come to the gig, and you want your one amp, which is all brutal and really, really cool for the for the uh, genty kind of stuff. But it's missing on the setting that you have it on the amp, that mid-kick for the singing, soaring solo. Well, you can do that. For me in a studio, a pedal EQ is kind of pointless. I'm, I'm going to admit. First of all, look at the wall of amps. Let's see, show the wall of amps. I have a lot of amps there. So me, in a very special situation, I'm going to go and go to a different amp if I don't like what I'm hearing. Okay, I'm not going to EQ it with a pedal. Uh, if I... Um, back to me. Um, if I have a problem with the sound, first of all, I wouldn't try to EQ it and record it. Uh, or I would fix it with an EQ after I recorded it. But that's a studio application. You can't do that live. Uh, the guy on the front of house mixing console will not have something this complex and this surgical. So for a live situation, this is very valuable, especially if you're going with a simpler rig. Um, I've got an Ibanez AZ2204. TAB here. Got some single chord sounds, some humbucker sounds. Into the Dynamis, into the Ox, and as I said, with the EQ200 in front of it and in the effects loop. So, we're gonna go. I always play those chords. We have it on. Makes no difference. Um, let's play around with it. Very low for guitar, use that for bass. Thump, it gets very thumpy. All of a sudden, it feels like a 100 watt amp. 
if you have an amp and you're doing genty stuff, that could be good to take out for the amp to be more responsive, kind of like what a tube screamer does. <laughs> That's fatness right there. Out of the single single coil. That makes a huge difference. That's mid. Sounds more acoustic. -y. Acoustic guitar simulator right there. You see, can you see what you can do with one guitar, one amp, and an EQ, and that rhymes? True story, my very, very first pedals, I had a tiny little shit amp. I mean, one of those, uh, and I went with my brother and bought pedals after a couple of months of playing guitar. And the first two pedals I bought was a Boss DS1 and in graphic EQ from Boss, I think with the G7, GE7, something like that. Um, GEQ7, I don't know what it was called, but it was a Boss pedal, it was an EQ because the guy at the store showed me how much I could shape my sound with just that and how much it, I could get out of my little really, really crappy transistor amp. So yeah, one of the two first pedals I ever had, ever, 1990, was a Boss EQ. Used that quite a bit. For guitar, up there, you don't hear too much. For electric guitar, for bass, maybe more. Overall level. Let's do this, we're gonna look. We're gonna do this drastic boosties. Let me see what happens. shift the frequencies slightly so you can really pick the range that you want uh, and both of them again okay so that that's really all there is now let's do the same thing why not uh but on the b side which is now in the effects loop now it's not affecting how the preamp uh, makes the sound, it's just shaping what the preamp's doing. Get 
up there, not too much happening. Now, the Dynamis is a very flexible amp. What it cannot do is metally stuff. Well, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna go to something dri driven. I'm gonna start, the reverb's coming from the amp, I'm gonna start on uh, the blue setting, which is the middle gain, and see how I can push it with the A side. If I now push the mid, it's gonna push the amp harder. You forgot that this is what we actually have. Less gain, less mid focus. So you could really have this as a open chord rhythm sound. save this by holding this in, going to one, holding it in again. Now that's saved to one. We're going to see how it affects uh, the sound if I do the same setting, but on the B side behind the drive. So for that, I'm going to go to B, wiggle my sticks just the tiniest bit. So I technically should have the same setting on B. Gonna go to A and flatten it. Okay. Um, and save that to memory too. So I should technically have on one, I should have that setting on A, but nothing on B. And on two, I should have that setting on B, but nothing on A. Okay, gonna save that again. There you go. Um, so, let's see what that sounds like. I have the mids. Do you hear that? Let me turn that delay off. mids without uh, the additional gain boost because I'm not pushing the preamp harder. I also get a volume boost. Because now it's taking that sound, adding the mids, and pushing that harder into the power amp, uh, therefore giving me a volume boost. So um, behind the preamp is, with the same setting, is a very different story than in front of the preamp. <laughs> Of 
course, I can go to A here and boost that in front of it as well. So now we have kind of mid-city on B and mid-city in front of the app. Now that's a volume boost in the mid and a gain boost in the mid. So let me show you. You're playing... And then your solo comes. So, that works. Let's see if we can make it a little bit more aggressive. So I'm giving it quite a bit of gain. Okay, it's flattened. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, low end before the amp out, so it responds quicker. Kind of a tube screamer trick. I'm shaping it in the effects loop. I want a little bit more bite. So now I'm giving it the fatness back, but uh, after the power amp, uh, no, after the preamp, I'm confusing myself. There's quite a bit you can do, so let's save this. Let's see what we did here. Well, that's definitely a different sound than we had before in terms of gain, but we're going to turn this off. Yeah. <laughs> This is our solo sound. 
Without the use of overdrives or any tone sculpting, drive, distortion, whatever, I've used what my amp has. Uh, I like my amp. And I've done quite a few different things with it so that in a live situation, I have exactly the kind of sounds I want. I want a little bit more gain. I'm pushing it in front of it. I want, you know, you get it. There's a lot you can do. There's stuff you can do with expression pedals. Um, there's stuff you can do with extra switches. You can control this in any way you want and MIDI. Um, so I think if you have a simple setup that needs some tweaking to be just right in the mix, this is the way to go. It's a little bit bigger compared to other EQs, but it is as surgical, that's the way I, I really want to describe it, as surgical as it can be. It doesn't have, you know, just a few frequencies. You can even move all of them around a little bit. It's a good pedal if you need to tweak your frequencies. For me, it's not. I don't need that. I have amps, so I go to the right amp, or uh, I do that with mic positioning, either in the uh, Waza 2 amp expander, the aux, or the two notes, or I do it uh, in an EQ later. But you can't do that in a live situation. Um, that being said, there might even be, Leslie, make it bigger. Um, thank you. There might even be I'm saying I wouldn't use it in a studio, which is kind of stupid because that lead sound, really cool. None of these amps will give me that pushed mid leads, that Brian Mayi kind of lead sound, none of them. So why not use it in the studio? I'm telling myself right now, because I'm an idiot. Um, it's a good pedal. Oh, uh, boss is paying me to make this video. Not to say that it's a good pedal, it's a good pedal because it is. Uh, I'm being paid because this is work. Okay, just, just letting you know, because I have to legally. And if you don't believe that it's a good pedal, why don't you buy it, check it out. If you don't like it, send it back. There's literally nothing to lose. Um, so why would I lie to you if you can send it back? I can't trick you into anything because you, it's the internet. You can't be tricked. You can't send shit back. That being said, please, Sweetwater and Toman has links, have links below. If you use those, um, that really helps me. Uh, that supports the channel. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Leslie, for switching. And thanks, Boss, for this. And also thanks to the animals at the end. <laughs> <laughs>